fez vai. Please be seated. We welcome you to our service this morning as we remember the life of Jean Ponch and recall the precious message of the gospel in which she had put her hope and in which she now lives. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Jean, and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought her to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word, and lead us through this earthly life, until at last we are united with you and all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. We hear the comforting words of the shepherd's psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
we join in the response of resurrection comfort as printed in your bulletins. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also will appear with him in glory. We will be before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Let us pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son Jesus to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with your promise that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to follow along on your bulletin insert as we take in the portions of God's word for, for this day. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Job. We read chapter 19, verses 23 through 26. And in these words, we find an assurance of the resurrection from the dead that was held by one of the believers in the earliest of times. And that truth stands for all time. Oh, how I wish that my words were written down. Oh, how I wish that they were inscribed in bronze, that they would be engraved in rock forever with an iron tool and letters filled with lead. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the end of time he will stand over the dust. Then even after my skin has been destroyed, nevertheless, in my own flesh, I will see God. This is the word. If you would turn to page 84 in the front of our hymnals, we will join in singing in unison our psalmody for this morning, Psalm number 46. Make glad the city of God, 
the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our New Testament reading for this morning is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Jesus speaks words of comfort to the disciples, and even though they do not understand at first what he is saying, we New Testament believers know. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know where I am going and you know the way. Lord, we don't know where you are going, Thomas replied. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you would also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue with the singing of hymn 579, Lift high the cross.
text for our devotion for this morning is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4. We read verses 6 through 8. You see, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness. The Lord, the righteous judge, will give it to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to everyone who loved his appearing. Heavenly Father, through your word of truth, strengthen our faith, deepen our understanding of things in time and things eternal. Comfort us with this message. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, uh, fellow believers, especially today, you the family uh, who's grieving for Jean, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With, with an eye on her future departure from this world, from this life, Jean Ponch wrote down notes. In fact, she had several copies of them notes that pertained to this day, to this setting. She had several hymns picked out, she had scripture selections, she had lists of other things like the pallbearers and, and so on. And her family chose from the multiple readings and the multiple hymns that were there uh, what were going to be in the service today. And, and this was chosen as representative of Jean's last message, and we will consider these words today. The text begins with, you see. Paul had been giving Timothy a lot of instruction in this letter. From the beginning to the end, he was sharing important things with him. He said, fan into flame the gift of God. Hold fast to the pattern of sound words that you've heard from me in faith and in love in Christ Jesus. Be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. Remind people of these things, correctly handling the word of truth, and continue in the things you have learned and about which you have become convinced. All of these things in general, and more specific things regarding Timothy as a pastor and a preacher, uh, were given, and, he, and they were shared with a sense of urgency by the apostle. Because the apostle knew he had good reason for that urgency. He wrote, you see, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. Paul could see that the trial, the Roman trial that he was undergoing, was going against him and that execution was in his near future. With that in mind, he speaks to young Timothy. And it's, it's fascinating to see that even in a dire moment like this, he is looking at things from a Christian perspective. Jesus had repeatedly called to believers. He had said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses it for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. And again, Jesus says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Paul considered his life a drink offering which was being poured out. The Old Testament picture was that the sacrificial animal was being offered up, consumed, burned on the altar. And the drink offering was a dedication to the Lord being poured out on the ground beside the altar. Paul's sacrificial lamb and ours was Jesus Christ. Paul's response to having been saved was the dedication of his life to serve as the Lord had called him, to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And that life of dedication, giving himself up 
for that purpose was his way of, of honoring the Lord, of thanking him for Jesus' sacrifice for his sins. That is the same sacrificial lamb that paid for Gene's sins and the sins of the whole world. And it is, it is an interesting thing to see how many times in this world, to ponder how many times in this world earnest believers have done the same thing over the years, trusted in Jesus Christ for forgiveness and lived their life as a drink offering to the Lord. Children, do you remember your mom and dad, Donnelly and Jean, bringing you up in the training and instruction of the Lord? Do you remember them uh, sharing Paul's words with you and imitating what Christ was doing, uh, bringing people to faith? How many times did your mom echo and imitate Paul's words by word and by example as, as she led you, your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren to fan into flame that gift of faith, to hold fast to God's true word, to be strong in grace and to continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. Having explained why Timothy was receiving all these encouragements, Paul shows him what, what Paul himself sees through faith. He says, I have fought the good fight. In other words, I've resisted temptation and doubt. He says, I have finished the race. And that reminds us that it is not enough to just come to faith, but that we need to remain by the working of the Spirit in saving faith all the way to the end, as Jesus taught uh, the importance of that truth in the parable of the, of the wise and foolish virgins. Paul says, I have kept the faith. In other words, he continued to use the means of grace, the, the gospel in God's word and the gospel connected to baptism and the Lord's Supper, an avenue through which the Holy Spirit was keeping him in saving faith to the end. He says, it is God's hand at work in all this. No credit to us weak sinners. And, and your mom, grandmother, great-grandmother, your neighbor, your friend gave all glory to God for her sins being forgiven and for salvation being made hers, and rightly so. Now Paul shows us his view at the end of his life. It is the same view that Jean could see by God's grace. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness. The Lord, the righteous judge, will give it to me on that day. Taking Jesus at his word, Paul could rest secure, knowing that through faith alone, God would graciously count him righteous, a child of God and an heir of heaven, because of what Christ had done for him. Jean cherished this truth. It moved her forward all her days. And I'm sure that as a loving mom, grandma, great-grandma, nothing would please her more than to share this view of God's grace and love with her family and friends. She would want everyone to enjoy the mercy she has received through Christ. So she echoes the final words of Paul in our text. The Lord, the righteous judge, will give it to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to everyone who loves his appearing. What a comforting fact to hold on to at a time of loss like this that Jean left this world a believer in Jesus, her Savior, and that through her faith, God has graciously taken his believing child home. Her soul rests with the Lord, and on the last day, her soul will be reunited with her raised and glorified body, and she will be welcomed, body and soul, into eternal life in heaven. What a wonderful encouragement for those of us who remain in this sinful world with its snares and dangers. To hold on to Jesus by faith, 
to walk with him as believers in this world, to bring up our children to know him and trust him for salvation and life, to witness of him to others, knowing that all of us who believe will also be welcomed into the kingdom of glory, to rejoice with all who have gone before us in him who is our Lord of life, our Savior, and our King. Amen. Having heard the message, we join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the singing of hymn 158, I am content, my Jesus lives again.
Jean Oliver Ponch was born on July 31, 1940, to Dr. Irwin and Dorothea Reinhold Oliver in Graceville, Minnesota. As a young child, Jean loved visiting Mrs. Lena Gudenbohr and the neighborhood grandmas to play and snack on milk and cookies. Jean attended elementary school in Graceville and, at, and graduated high school in 1958 from St. Mary's Academy in Faribault, Minnesota. She continued her education in Missouri for one year and then a half year at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. During the summers, Jean enjoyed swimming and boating on Lake Tokwa and Big Stone Lake at the Oliver Cabin. She met Don Lee Ponch as he drove past their dock in his boat, and the rest is history. Jean and Don Lee were married on March 26, 1960 at the United Congregational Church in Graceville. Jean and Don Lee were blessed with four children, Clark, Laura, Julie, and Carl, and raised them on their farm south of Johnson, Minnesota. Jean was active at Mount Olive Lutheran Church. She participated in the Ladies' Aid, Lutheran Women's Missionary Society, and as a Sunday school teacher. She also participated in the Hospital Auxiliary, Big Stone County Historical Society, Homemakers Club, Blood Mobile Coordinator, and after moving into Graceville, she became a hospice volunteer for Rice Hospice. Jean's hobbies included playing whist at neighborhood card parties, cooking and baking, embroidery, flower gardening, reading books and magazines, and enjoyed coffee with her friends. Sunday afternoon drives often included visiting with friends or relatives. She dearly loved her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and cherished their visits. One memory stands out. A very young Amanda asked Grandpa where all his hair went. Grandpa told her that Grandma pulled it all out, which Grandma vehemently denied. Jean also enjoyed cooking Sunday dinners, at which Carl always snitched the Marchino cherries in the salad and the chicken heart. Jean is survived by her children, Clark Ponch of Golden Valley, Minnesota, Laura and Gregory Athey of Clinton, Minnesota, Julie and Leonard Epley of Morton Grove, Illinois, and Carl Ponch of Graceville, Minnesota. Eight grandchildren, a recently deceased Amanda Athey and her significant other Paul Guderian, Nicole and Benjamin Jones, Amber and Craig Doshadis, Denner, uh, Jennifer and Ted Curry, Carolina and Joel Duth, Ethan Epley, Matea and Daniel Koch, Renata Keenan and Keenan Epley Robinson, nine great-grandchildren, Zoe Jones, Zaire Jones, Maria Deshadis, Marley Deshadis, Mina Deshadis, Oliver Curry, Esther Duth, Eliana Koch, and Luann Koch, and siblings, Gail and James Lefebvre, Robert Oliver and John Oliver, brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, Roger Ponch, Carolyn Ponch, David and Ruth Ponch, Harlan and Carol Ponch, Burton Ponch, and Bertie and Myron Dewan, and numerous nieces and nephews. Jean was preceded in death by her husband, Donley, parents, Irwin and Dorothea Oliver, parents-in-law, Henry and Florence Ponch, great-grandson, Lamar Athey Vinson, brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, Marsha Oliver, Joanne Oliver, Ronald Ponch, Barbara Ponch, Sharon Ponch, and Rita Ponch. Blessed be her memory. We continue with prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we turn to you in this hour of sadness. We thank you for having made our loved one your own dear child through faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. In our grief, we rejoice that you have guided Jean with your counsel, kept your promises to her, and received her into the mansions of glory. We pray that you will guide us through your wisdom throughout the rest of our earthly lives. Comfort us in our sorrow. Give us your strength, that though we feel weak, we may be strong. Keep us faithful to the end, and receive us at last to glory through the merits of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
we join in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn, hymn 327, God be with you till we meet again. We thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, at this time, uh, we are going to be recessing and the family is going to be going to the Consolidated Cemetery at Graceville for the interment and then over to the Ortonville Community Building for the fellowship meal, which you are all invited to. Graceville, uh, Graceville I'm, I'm sorry. Don't need to drive further, do we? One question, would you like the folks that are going directly to the community building to begin their meal and then and then we'll meet them there yes uh, when when you get to the community building please uh, feel free to begin your meal and and the family will join you uh, when they get done with the interment and then the conversations and the memories can flow from there thank you <laughs>